Howdy, today on Flipping Science we're going to be looking at silicate ions. So silicon is very important. Um, it's the second most ele uh, common element in the Earth's crust, and it's found combined with oxygen to form uh, silicon uh, tetroxide uh, tetrahedra. Sometimes it's silicon dioxide. The ratio depends on what the silicon is joined to, or how many oxygens the silicon is joined to. Um, the silicates are important because they can form a wide variety of shapes, and that leads to different structures um, in the silicate, and they produce the different rocks that you get. The silicon can also uh, bond with aluminium to produce alumin aluminosilicates. Um, and again, they make up a decent whack in the minerals that are found in the Earth's surface. So what do you need to be able to do? You need to be able to find the charge of the silicate or aluminosilicate iron. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I'll take you through two different ways of finding the charge. Um, the first way is to use the oxidation numbers of the components that make up the silicate or aluminosilicate uh, basically, you add those together in the right ratios, and that will give you the charge of the aluminosilicate ion. So we're going to start with albite. So we've got the formula down here of albite. Um, we want to figure out the charge on its aluminosilicate. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on the aluminium, silicon, and oxygen part of it. So we've got uh, Al Si3O8, and we need to find what the charge is on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up the oxidation numbers in the correct ratios and what will be left over, our number at the end, that will give us our charge. So aluminium is plus 3, so we've got plus 3. Uh, we've got 3 times the oxidation number of silicon, which is plus 4. So plus 3 times 4. And plus 8 times the oxidation number of oxygen, which is minus 2. So 8 times minus 2. And if we add those together, we'll get the... Um, charge on the aluminosilicate ion. So we've got uh, plus 3, plus 12, minus 16. So we've got 15 minus 16 and that gives the charge of minus 1 overall. So the charge on the aluminosilicate ion is minus 1 there. There's another way of doing this, which is where you just look at any of the metals that you have maybe out the front of the aluminosilicate or you look at any other ions that you might have at the end. So you might have to have some hydroxide ions at the end that will have a minus one charge. You might have some metals at the front that will have a positive charge. So in this case, if we look at our bite here, we can see out the front there's a sodium ion. So the whole point is the charge in the end has to be neutral. So the sodium ion here has to balance out the charge of the entire aluminosilicate over here. So the charge on sodium is plus one, so that means the charge on the aluminosilicate has to be minus one. So if we have plus one plus the uh, charge of, in this case, an aluminosilicate. Has to equal zero. So our sodium is our plus one. So then the charge on the aluminosilicate has to be equal to minus one. So our charge over there would be minus, and our charge for the sodium would be plus. So we'll do another example. We'll look at lawsonite. Now again, this is a it's a silicate ion they've said specifically. So we're not going to include the aluminium in our calculation. So the silicate ion there is Si2O7. So we need to find the charge on that. So I'll do the first way over here. All right. So we're going to we've got uh, two times the oxidation number of silicon, which is plus four, and we're going to add to that seven times the oxidation number of oxygen. So seven down here which is minus 2. So we've got uh, 2 times plus 4 is 8. Um, 7 times minus 2 is 14, so 8 minus 14. 8 minus 14 is minus 6. Alright, so that gives us our charge on the iron as being minus 6. We'll try it the second way over here. So I'm looking at the things that are out in front. So I've got a calcium. A calcium has a charge of plus 2. We've got two aluminiums. Two aluminiums is each aluminium is plus three. And then I've got two hydroxide ions at the end here. And 
they have a charge of minus 2. So I've got plus 2, plus 6, minus 2, cancel that off. And I get a charge of plus 6. All right. So all the other bits there, they're producing a charge that is positive 6, so that means the charge on the iron has to be minus 6. So both ways confirm the same result. So here's another example. We're look, looking at the aluminosilicate um, iron in natural light. So we, have, we need to include the aluminium in there. So we get Al2Si3O10. That's the aluminosilicate iron there. So we'll do the first way over here. It's got two times the oxidation number of aluminium, which is plus three. Three times the oxidation number of silicon, which is plus four and 10 times the oxidation number of oxygen, which is minus two. So we get uh, plus six, plus 12, minus 20, uh, plus six plus 12 is 18, 18 minus 20 is, uh, 18 minus 20 is minus two. All right, do the second way over here. So, uh, the only thing that we have to worry about there is the sodiums here. The water here doesn't, that's water of hydration, that doesn't incorporate a charge at all. So the charge on each sodium is plus one. So the overall charge on the metals there is plus two. So therefore the charge has to be minus two. So both of those confirm. So we get the charge on the uh, aluminous silica ion as being minus two. So by showing you this, um, we can see the silica mineral overall has no charge. So the charge on the anion, the silica or aluminosilica anion, has to be balanced by metal cations or the hydroxide ions that we saw before. So if you know the charge of the silica anion and the metal cations that are involved, you can determine the formula of the mineral. So here's an example question. It says the silica um, anion in serpentine is SiO10-4. Uh, there are hydroxide ion presence in a mole ratio of 8 hydroxides to 1 uh, silicon ion. And the cations present are magnesium ions. Find out the formula of the silicon. So there's a little bit of work involved here. So we'll start with working at the back. So we've got um, SiO10. Now that has a charge overall of minus four. So we'll put that there. There for each one of these, we have eight of these. So we're going to include eight hydroxides just to see what our overall charge is. Okay, so our overall charge of this stuff over here, we've got minus four and eight times minus one, so minus eight. So we've got an overall charge of minus 12. Now that needs to be completely balanced by the um, cations out the front in this case. Each magnesium ion is plus two. So uh, we need to divide out minus 12 there by two and that gives us six. So we're gonna to need to have six magnesiums out the front. So our overall formula, so we've got our magnesiums there. So our overall formula of the uh, of the silicate in this case is going to be Mg6 SiO10 OH8. So here's another question. It says the silica anion in pyrope is SiO4 4 minus. Three of those ions are present in the minerals formula. The cations present are magnesium and aluminium. Three magnesium ions are present. So our question really is how many aluminiums are present. So we need to figure out our overall charge. So we've got uh, three times uh, the charge on the aluminosilicate, which is minus four. Uh, we've got three magnesium ions present. So it's three times the charge on the magnesium is plus two. Um, and overall, that's going to equal our X. So that's the charge that we need to balance with the aluminium ions. So we've got three times minus four, so minus 12, uh, plus three times plus two. So that's six equals X. So our charge that's uh, minus 12 plus six, so minus six. Our charge that we need to find using the aluminium ions is uh, my, uh, plus six to balance that out. So there's a charge of plus three for each one, so divide that by three. Uh, that means that uh, we're gonna have two aluminium ions. So the overall formula of the uh, silicate mineral, um, we're going to have our Mg, we've got three of those. Our aluminium, we've got uh, two of those, and then our uh, silicate, SiO4, 
and we're told three of those are present, so put that in brackets, put the three at the end. So today we looked at how to find the formula of a silicate or aluminosilicate um, anion given specific information. That's it for Fleming Science today. See ya. <laughs>